Welcome to episode 44 of the Whiskey House Pub House podcast. I guess tonight it's going to be the Rum House. This is Hunter, your guest introer, along with series, series regulars Dylan and Zach. We also have Nick, Matt, and Shamian in the room with us. Thank you very much, Hunter, for that excellent introduction. Couldn't like you said, said better ourselves. I know we could not, so we won't. Uh, as usual, we, we kind of get right into these things, but I think we should have our our guests introduce themselves, especially the new one, mm. Shamian. How are Hello. you? Hello. <laughs> Welcome. It is an honor to have you guys here. It's a wonderful uh, abode and podcast studio for yep. the time being we are visiting. Nice. Yep. So we are privileged Beautiful. right now to be in Shamian's amazing basement, and it is so... If this weren't a podcast, I so wish it wasn't for this one episode, because I'd love to show an audience your guys' abode. It it's, is it's a Tahiti room. Yeah. We talked about streaming it. Actually, we're like, yeah, we should have. We did ask about that. I I think that's (laughs) something that we, you know, we're trying to think of something to do that's sort of special for like a fiftieth episode. Yeah. Well, and we also we used to record these on YouTube, still audio only, but we but we still publish them on a on YouTube, and that is a you know video platform. Which you you could have just we could have just started. (laughs) Well, yeah, we we stopped after like episode five. Yeah. Um, and we could just have. If one of us just decided to pony up and buy a camera, you know, that was nice. It'd just be a – it could be Well, somebody's nice already got addition. a camera. But I'm yeah. not good at clipping. Right. It's, it's true, yeah. Well, you just got to get the, uh, you know, what's the, you know, uh, action set go Yeah, the clipboard. Pretty the, much anything that you want to be. <laughs> it's like just an action. No, but you need, the, you need that specific sound, though. Like it, a spoon and a fork could uh-huh. be – that <laughs> if we gave one of us a spoon and a fork we'd have to take it away from them because they just keep jangling it the whole <laughs> podcast yeah you gotta, sometimes you get a real people back in yeah speaking um, of reeling it back in today's a rum episode people we're not the whiskey house pop house we're the rum house pop house and mm-hmm. we got seven rums to try tonight i believe so is that the correct amount yep and i say we get right into it does we, that sound well, good? So we introduced Shamia, but we did not introduce. No, well, they've but the, they've been on here before. Well, not Hunter, not our, not the person. Hunter's not I, it, not our inductee. Oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. I was the intro, or so yeah, yeah. But you I, didn't, I, but I, you didn't introduce yourself. I suppose, I suppose uh, this is Hunter. Mm-hmm. Is there myself in, now? Is there an initiation process? Not really. Oh, oh, okay. Button shot. Just chug a lot of rum. <laughs> Give yeah. me a hot spoon and expose your knee. <laughs> <laughs> No, your other knee. Your other yeah. knee. My other knee. My, uh, my other knee. <laughs> yeah, so, well, that, I guess that counts as an introdu- introduction. So, mm-hmm. uh, we're going to be going down the several rums, do a little bit of a talky talk about them, mm-hmm. a little tasty taste. And it's probably going to even be less informal than it usually is. Uh, Nothing wrong with that, guys. Yeah, no. Oh. Just, you know. Bear we with talk, us. Have some patience. We talked about this episode coming, you know, to fruition, and yeah. it's it's been probably a year and four months since we talked about it. I don't know. I didn't look. Yeah. I know we talked about doing a random episode mm-hmm. at some point, but uh, we've talked a lot about a lot of things. Yep. Shamian was actually the one happened. that <laughs> got it to happen. So it just took someone that wasn't us to make it happen. That's yeah. true, and that's usually what, what it takes. Yep. I got a question for you. I'm curious. Yeah. If we may. Uh, tell me about your feelings on rum and just kind of your preconceived ideas. Like, what do you know rum to be? Mm-hmm. I only really know rum to be a sweet mixer. You know, okay. something you put mm-hmm. in something else to give it just, you know, really makes the night a little more fun. Sure. Because uh, we ha- we've had drinking rums, sipping rums, I mean, on. Like, we've tried Limited, in, yes. in as, like, final caps to episodes. And I was never like, whoa. This, right. is, this is like way better than whiskey mm. but that being said i know that there's potential out there i know that um uh, one of the higher brands up there foursquare is uh given the reputation of being a nice um essentially the quote-unquote single malt of rum mm-hmm. you know it's something that carries with it a lot of um a lot of meaning uh as a company yeah but we've never inspire artistry and value and a certain amount of yeah what's the word prowess yeah prowess they add 
it, it, it takes rum to the next level of being something yep. than what, different than what it's perceived well, as. I know that rum is is becoming quickly the next hot ticket mm-hmm. um, for spirits just because bourbon and scotch being so high of a demand right now yep. and limiting its um, higher exclusive yep, bottlings. It's too good. It's too good, guys. <laughs> Whiskey is too good. And then, well, that's, that's the pro- <laughs> and that's the problem. And people are looking for the next thing, which yep. is rum. Yep. And they're finding these um, artisan rum producers mm-hmm. that are still trying to be true to what rum is and not spiced. Because that's the other thing is like, um, it's not it's, all spiced rum. No, it's, but there's a lot. Right, there's right. super varying, yeah. very limited laws and regulations for rum, mm-hmm. and um, it is. Uh, hazardous to navigate if you don't look into it for sure so yeah for sure what about uh you hunter nick matt what do, what do you guys think of when you think of rum i'm kind of in the same boat where you know i i really appreciate bourbon brandy things like that to sip on rum i've always gotten the cheapest thing to mix into mixed drinks mm-hmm. you know i don't i don't know i don't really have much experience with with just sipping on straight rum so I'm excited mm-hmm. for tonight just to kind of get some of those flavor profiles, sure. you know, just to for learn sure. a little bit more about it, experience it. I wish Akavit was the next big thing, mm-hmm. but uh, I guess I'll stick with rum. Yeah. You know, so. Are you Nordic by <laughs> chance? Like heritage? Yeah. 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 I'm a little bit. I'm a little. Because that, that's a, a Norwegian uh, origin drink, right? Aquavit, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I always say it It tastes tastes like uh this is gonna sound super stupid to anyone that drinks akavit because i i've only had a few times but it, it tastes like uh like a sausage almost I I it, it, it uses sausage. Yeah. wow it I uses was so that, is not that was the last thing i was thinking <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah it's, a, it's a strong it's a strong fennel flavor do you get a good snap that yeah. sounds uh, very refreshing yeah. 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 it's not it's not great you know sure. I, I was uh, i was being sarcastic it's not the best yep. it's uh, a very strong fennel it's oh, like well, just yeah yeah we'll explore that on a different episode. yeah different episode different yeah. episode but i'm I love the we're talking about though. rum yeah. hunter love the input yeah hey way to way to sidetrack the whole episode that's my job it's, it's great Nick. to get into different subjects. Yes. Nick, rum, what are you thinking? Well, my only experience with rum is Sailor Jerry. Oh, yeah. Which I would get if I was sick as a kid. <laughs> my dad would give me a little bit of Sailor Jerry, oh. and he would say, you know, gargle it, but don't drink it. And I'd probably still drink it sometimes. <laughs> Asterix. On the- and... Yeah, just like cheap spiced rum. That's pretty much all I've ever, except for like Bumbo. I've had yeah. the Bumbo rum, yep. the like banana y kind of one, mm-hmm. which sure. I had it at like a, it was a speakeasy in Chain Assen. Yeah. And a buddy of mine was trying it. I'm like, that smells awesome. Let me try mm-hmm. it. And mm-hmm. I was like, yeah, this is the best thing. And then I bought a bottle of it. I was like, you know what? You know, yeah, it's not, not okay. for me. Right on. But Didn't you have a, uh, a uh, somebody staying down in Puerto Rico in another mm. unit with you that uh, was famously making a cocktail with 151. Yeah. So what was that cocktail? So this guy, he, he he's basically he's like the definition of a starving artist. <laughs> like this this guy, I'm not gonna say his name, but he worked on the second the Netflix. Uh, reiteration of Mystery Science Theater 3000. Mm. He was he build he would build sets for them. That's awesome. And he would spend months like painting knobs and dials into plywood, and like what a dream know, setting it all up. And that that show flopped really really hard. Not for yeah. us. It, wait, it <laughs> well, did. It, it flopped yeah. terribly. Oh. It we, made but, almost no money. Yeah, but but it made so all the original fans were so happy that. Because every t- time the season flopped, they would just do another Kickstarter. And the Kickstarter, yeah. and the always Kickstarter was always successful. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was and successful. Which that reminds me that there was a Kickstarter Recent, well, that recently happened, yeah. and we should have been seeing another Stuff. set. Yeah. Well, yeah. let me offer you some insight into what was actually going down. <laughs> the production of the show. Which, from Were you granted, drinking rum at the time? While I was getting this, <laughs> this insight? Y- uh, yes. yes. But... It doesn't. That doesn't mess with the insight at all. I'm sure it's still very, very valid. 
But basically, nobody was making money except for the producers. Everybody else on set was like basically working week by week for very little money. And so the show flopped and then, you know, basically the whole crew fell apart. And the guy ended up he's like sleeping on somebody's couch and mm. then he got invited down to Puerto Rico and to sleep on someone's couch. To sleep, well, yeah, <laughs> a, a to sleep on couch. a couch. But um man, I really got sidetracked. I don't even remember what the, Oh, his the cocktail. drink. And so this makes more sense though. Yeah, now. he was kind of like a like a stray dog in some senses like he he was like a lovable guy, but he just had a rough go of everything he tried to do. And so he'd hang out with them and kind of, you know, try to keep them some company. And he was like, Hey, why don't you come down for some drinks? And I was like, well, you know, I don't really want to. He's like, no, just come down. I'll make you, I'll make you a drink. I was like, all right, fine. And so I show up and he's like, all right, I'll get you something. And he brings me this drink. I'm like, what is this? It just tastes <laughs> like a glass of liquor. Like, <laughs> But it's not. It's like, it's it's like nothing. a Tom and Jerry or an old Mickey Mouse, and then it's like it's a bottle and it just X X X. Oh yeah, it, it was could like be snake oil. It could be moonshine. It could be whatever. And, and he it's had given that. me one of these things, and it was like in a little not not tulip glass, but like a stemless wine glass, you know, larger. Mm. And so I took about two sips, and I set it down on the end table next to me, and I stopped drinking it. And so he, he was like, hey, "You need another one?" I was like, "No, I'm good." But this time I watched him make it. And he had, and it was it was equal equal proportions. It was, a third of it was white wine, another third was red wine, and then the final third was one fifty one. And he mixed that bad boy up, and he he had himself another drink, and then that night he uh, he proceeded to pee into the pool with his <laughs> pants around his ankles. Like standing up, standing over up. The pool. He was well. He was kind of so he wasn't <laughs> facing the pool. I shouldn't said he was peeing into the pool. He peed on the pool deck, mm-hmm. and he was kind of facing. There's like these you know patios for each of the units in the building, and his pants are around his ankles like a toddler peeing in a urinal. Did he have his shirt lifted up too? Uh, he, you know, might like, have, he might. He might have. Kind of. He's biting on it with his teeth, holding it up. <laughs> but anyway, I didn't know about this. Until the morning, I wake up to a text from some guests that were staying in the Airbnb I was managing. And one of the things they sent was a picture of him with his butt hanging out. Do you still have that photo? I do, somewhere. (laughs) (laughs) But, yeah, then I had to do full damage control because they had, like, kids staying with them. And they were like, are we safe here? That whole thing. (laughs) Then I had to go talk to him and tell him what happened. And he didn't remember any of it. And basically what ended up, I found out, happened was that he was, like, taking, like, sleeping pills. Oh. Mm. And then to combine with alcohol. And yeah. then he drank a, a couple of those things, and that was all it took. And he was sleepwalking and just hammered. And, yeah, it was bad. So it's that's like, our goal for the end of tonight is we yeah. all want to be <laughs> yeah. like him. We only have Adderall. So. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, that'll have to suffice. Uh, okay, well, I guess, <laughs> uh, Matt, would you like to share your well, you know, ideas is, of rum? Is there a better drink than rum? You, you think of the history of rum and what rum has been used for. We appreciate that, but of course, I appreciate rum the most with uh, ice and a Diet Coke. Mm-hmm. Okay. So s- sweet mixing, mm, right? Uh, rum and Coke on the golf course. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anytime. Anytime. Yeah. Anytime. Nice cherry Coke Zero. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so that is uh, that is where, growing up, I mean, I always thought of that as well. I mean, my dad, he's he still loves today his Captain and Cokes, mm-hmm. right? It's mm-hmm. the one drink he'll have when he comes over. And he only needs one, that's it. Um, And then, you know, you when you're t- fresh 21... You try the yep. Malibus, you're like, oh, man, it's rum, <laughs> you're right? <laughs> um, but in the last, I would say in the last year, since we have done this this basement, it's like, well, my drinking history is like, yeah, I've had Irish whiskeys. I love my, love my you know, mm-hmm. Irish whiskeys for mm-hmm. sure. Um, bourbons obviously have a little more mm-hmm. punch to them, yep. um, but definitely like those as well. I'm not a big Canadian whiskey guy, but... Oh, yeah. 
I, you know, I concur. Yeah, I agree. Just, I don't know. It's, I haven't had one that's like astounding. Yet. They're hiding. Yeah, yeah, they're, I'm, yeah. I'm hoping that they have a little secret. You so know? the conspiracy right. is the Canadians are actually they're up front trying to be nice, but they're secretly <laughs> plotting to take over and, the whiskey well, industry. They, or? They're hoarding it all. Oh, like we have all yeah, the wood yeah, yeah. for your barrels. <laughs> yeah. 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 We have everything. Uh, so when we did this, I there was a, a period I don't know probably 15 years ago where I was I was in the rums. Um, but it was very, a small stint and, and this sort of resurrected that. Okay. Yeah. And it's amazing to see kind of like what you're saying is like the next big thing, which is kind of annoying because again, you don't want to be a part it, of a trend. You want to do mm-hmm. it right. Cause you, you taste good. Or it's mm-hmm. like, well, right? it's, <laughs> I love trends. I love riding trends. That's why they're trendy. What's trending so right now. It, yeah. Actually, does anybody know? Like for liquor, well, as just far anything, just anything. In the world. Oh. Uh, <laughs> uh, Serena Williams. No, I, I, I actually, I yes, yes. I what yep. were you gonna say? Dylan? This is uh, <laughs> this is actually, um, it is trending and it is a, a very on topic thing for us. Um, so they just passed a law. They being um, the TTB, which I always forget what that stands for, but it's the Trades Tobacco. Mm-hmm. Um, whatever but they're in charge of regulating um american spirits and goods and the biggest thing that they've been trying to get passed uh through the united states congress is because you know bourbon is something recognized by the united states as a a product unique to them and that was passed way long ago um and scotland has their single malt that is recognized as a product of Scotland Scotch is from them. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of other countries have single malt uh, laws, but America did not have any category for that. So I think just last week or two weeks ago, um, obviously not from the posting of this co- podcast, but from recording date, uh, they passed a definition of American single malt. Wow. So that is now a legal uh, category. And that is something that is very trending right now because barrels are becoming very expensive mm-hmm. to get, which means mm-hmm. bourbon is uh, very popular. But however, it, with with the future being uncertain with bourbon, um, leaves the possibility of American single malt mm-hmm. become a very big product. Yep. Nice. A, a good differentiation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Further differentiation in our, our local marketplace. Oh, I see. The universal hand sign. That's he yeah. wants to start. <laughs> <laughs> For, uh, so I, I just um, it's interesting you talk about the laws because there are rums, like it, this is something that I just learned even this last week. Okay, um, it's crazy the amount of laws internationally even for exporting, importing. Oh yeah. And, uh, like, for example, I was looking at a particular rum called Havana Club. And it is a legit, like, you can only buy it in Cuba or the UK. Hmm. But there is a company that sells in the United States out of Jamaica. Oh, I'm sorry, Puerto Rico, called Havana Club. But it is not the same thing. Hmm. Sometimes people confuse that unless you do your research. And it's just like... That is a, a fascinating spot where I was like, "Wow, that's kind of crazy." Are you saying this is a rebranded product to be it able is a to completely be sold? Separate brand. Yeah, but it's the same. <laughs> it's the same product. name. Yeah. Yeah. So oh, same. It's, it, same name. It's like um, Glenn, right. Scotland. Right. Sure. Right. Okay. Right. Um, and then uh, possibly, for example, uh, Barbados, Jamaica, they have the laws in the books that if it comes out of that country, mm-hmm. like. It must have no additives, no sugars, mm-hmm. et cetera, right? There's there's some GIs tied to that. Um, but what people will do is they will buy them, mm-hmm. and then they will export them from other countries, mm-hmm. adding the spices, et yeah. cetera. Which is why I asked the in, uh, original question is a lot of the true rums are actually like very much like a scotch or a bourbon. Yeah. Because there are no sugars. Now, do they use cane sugar, molasses, et cetera? But it's the exact same distill process, yep. mm-hmm. right? Um, but that's is that was something that I immediately, like, the complexities. It, it's very... It's insane. There's, like... <laughs> pe- people are amazed how much variety there are there is in, in beers. 
and the moment you get to a distilled product, it, that opens the doors further. You know, Wider. further. And I'm obviously none of us here are experts on rum. You know, even yeah. Zach and I are not experts in anything, but we know whiskey a little bit more. So I'm not sure the uh, the diversity of rum, but the moment you have a distilled product and then you put aging into it and anything with that, then your outcome variant is exponentially. Yeah, and then you mix it with like sleeping yep. narcotics and stuff. <laughs> yeah, and right. wow, you start just the, ex- the level everywhere. of experience the experiences. that you can have is unending for sure. Now, uh, you talk about again earlier on with regards to the the trending and such, and this first one here, I. Uh, Texas. Yeah, Texas. I've been surprised to see how many states, Mm -hmm. because usually you think, again, what's the, uh, what's the pro, you know, you're just like, oh, it must be from an island. It must be from, right, you know, tropical region. region. Mm -hmm. But Minnesota now, you know, I counted five on the shelf and I bought one of them and I was like, well, let's, let's try that. But this one's from Texas. So the, the interesting thing, um, is when everyone thinks of, of, United States and they think of spirit, they think of bourbon. That was not the case 200 years ago. Um, you had things that were much more popular than um, whiskeys at that time, such as ciders and white rums. Um, I mean, age rums came from just needing a container to transport it, which was the barrels came from. And not necessarily directly, that that's where the aging came from. You know, just because it took multiple months to transport it, um, so They're like, man, this is way better after yep. after transporting <laughs> like it. Always it gets better. The country. That's crazy. Um, and then you have <laughs> things like that's where naval strength comes from because it mm. has to be a certain strength for, and I forget what the reason is, but there's a a, a British standard proof which mm. is n- naval strength. Um, but the reason rum kind of fell out of favor is because it was sugar became taxed and they're like all right well if we're not going to distill rum then we're going to go to whiskey and the whiskey they did was rye rye was um the biggest um native producer or native spirit at the time after cider well not cider being distilled product but after rum and cider kind of had their their hey time their heyday yeah. um so Lesson learned: Americans are just cheap. We're gonna drink. Yeah. This. We're gonna make the well, cheapest liquor actually, in the best that. way. And yeah. that's that's where that's every major um, kind of turning point for a spirit yeah. mm. is always connected yeah. to a law. Yeah. Look at Irish whiskey; mm. that was all malted barley at one point, and then the British came in and said, "Hey, we're gonna tax your malted barley." Well, then they said, "Screw you! We're gonna mm-hmm. do a portion of all malted yeah. barley," and that's where that comes in. It's yeah. it's almost never of. A, a purposeful discovery it's almost always yep. accidental yep it's like me at the liquor store when scotch tax hit it's like oh man lug a 100 bucks now yeah this bourbon's a lot cheaper or that <laughs> rum is way cheaper than that yeah so <laughs> let's, um, give, let's give that a try so uh, back to the texas whiskey so because i know nick wants to try some um so rum is coming back in favor and it, it, because it's not a there's not a deg- designation of where it has to be produced Mm-hmm. It opens the doors um, for a lot of places to produce it. And Belconis is a massive distillery, well, massive in quotations, um, in Texas that does a lot of experimentation and does a lot of variants, and this is one of them. So it's a cool. it's a very interesting rum that we hopefully will try soon. Yeah, we'll let's do the, some uh, pouring. Uh, what, where in Texas is it at? Winko. Waco. What's Waco. The, yeah, what's the Waco. 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 Let's not talk about it. Flamed. <laughs> but hey, that's oh, what yeah, you want. Cork, yeah. Yeah. Use next. Cork, cork, cork pop. pop. Yeah. Ooh, nice. there you go. Nice. That's fun. That's good. We were losing dad there. He was, mm-hmm. so, uh, he was starting to. <laughs> when I got to thinking about, like, because I've made some notes and stuff, but it, it's very interesting how, again, a lot of the just preconceived things mm-hmm. with whiskeys are the same with rums like people think pirates people think like you know the crazier the bottle the yep. more expensive mm-hmm. then it must be good and yep. it's like oh you see that with tequila all the time yeah like same thing i and just like, i just had one two days ago that was like the, case. the entire glass you know um decanter was this twisted 
like glass that's sure. completely unnecessary and actually makes it harder to store, harder to hold, <laughs> yeah. harder to grab. It's the tallest bottle on yep. the shelf. And then and then <laughs> the, the the cap itself is a glass, you know, you gotta pour it oh. you gotta like you know, you dump the whole thing upside down and then the water or not the the tequila will go into the cap. Really? And then it's cause it's like a valve. Well that's kinda interesting. And then you yeah, that, that's cool. <laughs> but it's like why? You know? Yeah. Like, yeah. Thank you. I didn't realize that this innovation of of glass containing would needed to be done. So, it's glass maker guys got to make their money somehow. <laughs> yeah. Got to justify our existence. Yeah. Dying profession. It um. is crazy though that <laughs> it's crazy though how how that can just like distort your thinking. Oh yeah, advertising works, right? You're mm-hmm. just like some marketing dude comes in and oh. you know, why why should I buy a rum that's got a guy uh, dressed as a pirate yep. or a privateer standing on a barrel? Yeah. I was watching a Studio Ghibli movie and in one of the just scenes real quick they were just like you know want to have some whiskey i was like that's kind of you know cute whatever and you open she opens it and puts the bottle on the the uh what are these called coffee table <laughs> coffee table <laughs> <laughs> the and, table and it's immediately recognizable it was johnny walker blue right it's where was in the, this in the, it's a studio ghibli movie oh which is a japanese oh. japanese like cartoon yep. anime anime stuff but it's like immediately because you know blue label yep. and they've been doing that forever. You and, and I would shape. obviously yeah. recognize that. Yeah, but yeah. even if you like, even if, if you've seen that bottle before, it's right. like, hey, that's that cool bottle I saw mm-hmm. at the liquor store, and that totally works. So right on, product placement, product placement. This is uh, we're we're smelling it right now. Yeah, so this, this is this it is, does this not is, smell like Texas. <laughs> it, 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 if I remember it, it has a um a familiar Texas flavor in there but um yeah not off the nose it is 60 percent um quick overview for smelling um is try to have your mouth a little bit open for this one because it is it will burn your nose fairly fast even if your mouth is open it can we'll still oh you get a brandy stuff i don't know yeah no i'm getting a lot of smells here but no, so it's the smell of Texas. Is that like cheap gas and ammunition? Mm-hmm. Or... I was gonna say like, <laughs> ah, like yes. it's like firearm smoke, <laughs> yeah. or or maybe it's, just farm. The smell smells. of very short highway runoffs. And... Oh my goodness! <laughs> yeah. This is uh, it smells very sweet and almost a little banana. Yeah, it's yeah. interesting. Hunter had something. What do you got under? We got on her. I was just wondering when uh when they started doing rum balconas. <sighs> I would say at least two years ago. I might be wrong on that, but I know probably it, for sure the last year, my gut saying last two years, um, it's been something recently that's just entered our market. Um, and they do special editions pretty much of everything. So I think there's like uh, even like some different rums. This is their standard rum. Um, all the ones that they have sold that I've seen of the standard are all 60%, which mm-hmm. is super cool. Yeah. I think there are higher ones that are single barrel, yep. and they're like you know even even higher because I don't remember what the distillation limit on rum is. There might not be one like as far as like the limit you can come off the still at. Yep. So I know whiskey, it's 160. So, but I'm not sure what rum is, yep. and then that that probably has different class, you know, classifications for depending on where it's from. But that is something that I, I wish to. Research, research, and yeah, you, know, you think we, we maybe we should have done the research well, before I, this episode. I had intent, but <laughs> I had intent. We'll just talk like we did. Yeah, it we'll, yeah, we'll talk like we yeah. know. That's kind of what we usually do. Is just kind of no or yeah, say more than we know, and then we just shut up when a real point's being made. If anybody <laughs> argues, just, just edit it out. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, and for my sense, I'm getting a little like a raw cocoa mixed with. Uh, a little bit of like brown sugar. Yeah, I thought That's it was like, like a little caramely. A little yeah. caramely. Mm-hmm. It definitely has some fire to it for sure. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's got molasses. Mm. Mm-hmm. Sure that. Mm. I've noticed with Balconas in general because I've had a few uh, of their bourbons. Mm-hmm. It finishes very similar. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, that, alcohol is alcohol. Or, yeah. you know, there's only so much you can yeah. do to change the flavor of the specific molecule <laughs> when you have 60, when it makes up more than half the drink. But it does have that, there's that signature Belconis note mm-hmm. in there. And it it's still just, has, it's like an, a super oaky, yeah. um, <laughs> I just watched a video of um, distillers revealing their own personal favorite 
whiskeys. I think it was that. It was another one. No, it was something else. But there was one. Somebody was talking about a Balcones that it was their favorite, and it gives them. It always gives them like an apple note, mm-hmm. and the, there's something in there. Yeah, that's like a, apple. I, I, I get like a green apple. Yeah, myself. Mm. for sure. I think it's but, more. Yeah, it's like that. It's the pungency, and a little. It's a little sour, um, to be honest. It's kind of. It's really good because this isn't a sweet. As, no. I, as I think a rum would be. And that's you know? that's exactly and that's the other that's thing. What is, makes it so different. That would have definitely been my <laughs> predeceived notion. Yeah. <laughs> it, too hot, Matt. <laughs> but it definitely drinks like a whiskey. Like it's mm-hmm. it's not. But this is how most of the rums would have been. I know. It's but now it's... you you think of rum as being sweet because most of the times they're spiced or they're that banana flavored yeah. whatever. And I should say like even like the. Like it's it's hot. It's got like a little bit of smoky, you know, charcoaliness yeah. to it. But like the caramel that I'm like drawing out of it, I feel like I'm searching for it because I'm used to rum being so sweet. I'm like, all right, where's the sweet bit? Right. I know there's some of that That's in there. Interesting. Yeah. I it definitely I, is smoky. Nick, yeah. You're used to drinking the uh, the Bumby rum and and stuff like that. It's Bumby Bumbo. Yeah. The the, the Bumbo rum, rum was like the only one I actually tried, and it's. It's it's too sweet to like enjoy almost like it's yeah we had to yeah, work really hard to get quickly. through the bottle. Mm-hmm. I just proof this down with some water, <gasps> and it's uh, sure oh, I don't it's really that. good. <laughs> sure, mainly honestly when you I, you want to try and I'll hand you this, but it, you got to pour it really slowly. It's got a little sure. lid on it, so it might be really nice with uh, spice. Here we got bottles coming as well. Oh, thank you, Mel. I'm still using that mainly just because. I think it's maybe because we started at 60%, you know, but when you take away the harshness, it gains so much complexity. I mean, I can't even describe all the flavors I'm tasting. Should we, we never made mention of our crew. Posse. We made mention of our mm-hmm. crew. And we have an audience tonight of very extremely helpful people. Super lovely. Mm-hmm. My beautiful wife, Autumn. <laughs> my beautiful wife, Melody. You guys want to say hi? And my imaginary friend, <laughs> Pedro. <laughs> Pedro. <laughs> Pedro, you look so handsome today. Thank you, Pedro, for the pizzas. <laughs> Dylan got into the Adderall. Mm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I knew this would happen sooner or later. Mm. Oh, it's so good. It's fun. It, yeah. I'm uh I'm impressed, actually. From a again, like just Connell US rum. Good job, Alconas. It's, it's pretty cool. I don't think I've ever had a a bad product yet from Balconis. Nope. And I don't think we will. <laughs> don't say that. Please don't say that. A, a final decision, I think. Because it's, it's, it's good, but I, I think I wanted a little bit more. More what? Rum? Just, the bottle's just rum. right there. It, it just... I, <laughs> no, no, no. I, I just... Uh, <laughs> that brandy glass is like six ounces. <laughs> yeah, I could have about <laughs> four or five <laughs> more ounces and then a good nap. But I think as far as a rum goes, mm-hmm. I, I just don't... You know, like you guys said, obviously there's different flavors involved yeah. and everything, but... Um, it's too basic. To, You're yeah, expecting some something different. Yeah, some, okay, exactly. Cool. exactly. You know, yeah, I and I think that. that comes from, you know, coming from a, a distillery that traditionally does yep. other so spirits. Watch that actually words. brings up a... Another question, because again, like these others that I have, like I've never tried these, but I, I'm mm-hmm. curious. Uh, I just recently listened to another podcast, and they were talking about what to do with bottles that you don't like. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes. Right? And um, you put them on shelves, and they sit there for years, and you die. Yeah. And you give me a kids, and your kids are like, "Why did he have this? Why for did so he long? save like, this? This thing went <laughs> bad." They, it was uh, only... <laughs> they actually had a lot of really good ideas, and one of them was what you just did, actually, which is open it up a little bit. You mm-hmm. know, add a little water. Yep. You know, obviously, like again, this whole idea of a preconceived thing. You know, when when you're when you're doing it, um, again, meet you where you're at with regards to what you're trying to get out of a rum. But at yep. the same time, like, maybe take a little of that lime or something and hit it mm-hmm. and, and see what happens. Because um, I agree, just... it, it, it did drop off for me yeah. when I taste it, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but I would love to experiment with that because mm-hmm. I, I feel like there is a foundation there that could be played with. And no, I definitely enough. like it. I definitely like it. Like, I don't want to underplay the the rum it's just it, you got it. we want your honest opinion you know you're overwhelmed you're yeah. like this is yeah exactly. fine and i think I like wanted some a little more 
for things you know that you don't like too it's it's still for us like they still go to use because they're good mixers right yep. Like anything that is not the best quality to drink by itself. If we mm-hmm. like something, if we really like something, it's like we're not mixing this in anything. Mm-hmm. But then for the ones that are, eh, you know, they're all right. It's, it's, like, it's a shame, though, because like the really good stuff that is like perfect by itself is the best stuff to mix still, you know, because yeah, it maintains. That's Where's the that's Coke true. at? Yeah. Yeah. Get Hunter a Coke. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 that's what I need. <laughs> I mean, it's just true, though. Like better ingredients, better, better, pizza, better Papa rum, John's. Papa Hunter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we we talked about that on the last episode of uh, is doing a expensive cocktail uh, episode. Mm-hmm. Not not expensive as like finding the core spirits, um, using expensive ver- versions of each exactly. core ingredient yep. in a cocktail. Yeah, and and compare maybe comparing that to a a standard um, spirit offering. So you know, doing a rum and uh, or a bourbon and coke, rum and coke, whatever. Doing mm. you know using maker's mark and then using um maybe a booker's you know about a hundred dollars compared to about thirty dollars is it significantly better yeah but that and this is the same thing you know with this proof i would actually love to try a rum old fashion yeah i think that that would be pretty fun Mm -hmm. uh with with that especially this is it's it's super oaky still and it does retain a lot of similarities to a whiskey Mm mm-hmm that would be a, a very fun um, spinoff. Yeah. 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 So sure. maybe you know Shamian, but how? What's what's like a regular aging period for for rum? The good stuff. How long would you age good rum? At least. That's hard. At mm-hmm. least five years. Right. Three to five years. You know how long this is aged for? Being t- from Texas. No. Twenty three months. I thought it was gonna be thirty six. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Wait. Let it's, me convert that in my head. It's less than two years. <laughs> I mean, that's. Yeah, it, and that's because you know temperature and the rick housing and, but the kind of flavors you get from aging something so fast, sure. it's not delicate. It's yeah. it's hard hitting. Right. Um, that process. That is impressive. Yeah. But I think that that's something that makes Texas anything different when you age in a barrel, because we talk about that all the time with whiskey. Hmm. Um, I love Balcones is dope because they they do it well. Like we, there's a lot of Texas whiskeys that don't get it quite right you know you age it for two years sometimes three and it doesn't quite come out yeah as you know it's just, it's <clears> swift too, yeah it's really simple and it's not that good and then you get balconis and they're like this is how it's this is how it's done <laughs> yeah that's interesting that's actually another thing with regards to the marketing that i noticed with rums is they're doing the barrel thing they're saying mm-hmm. well this is in this cask and this is you know this other cask or single you know it's yeah. like yeah that's mm-hmm. like saying you cold brew your beer, you know, like, or, you know, it's cold filtered. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, everybody does that. But, um, yeah, this, it's an impressive one. I, again, like, I'd like to try that with an old fashioned, see what happens. But uh, it's a, it's good. Maybe we'll have to road trip to Balcones. Oh, this is yes. what I love about marketing, though. You know, people do the most obvious things where they put it in a pretty way yeah. to attract the average oh, yeah. listener. I, yep. That's, that's what it's all about. Yeah, but yeah. if the mountains are blue, it's it's ready to drink. <laughs> <laughs> so. um, I think the other note, the other thing about this is this might be, this is definitely the first, might be the only, I believe, if I remember right, this is actually made with um, bootstrap molasses. Not cane sugar, because there's a bunch of different varieties of making rum. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe Zach could confirm. I think it, it says it on the back of the bottle, but and usually I think that that would be a lower grade of distilling sugar. Yeah, bootstrap doesn't sound fancy. No. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, they, they just call it. They just call it. Uh, the finest molasses available. That's all I'm they not, say. Where did I see that? Um, in Waco. <laughs> yeah. Hey, they get good stuff there. It's okay. Good stuff. <laughs> yeah. So here's the tasting notes, just just to compare what we kind oh, of sure. were saying. Uh, bold, bold and robust is its properties, and then uh, rich, deep fruit with viscous, warm notes of vanilla. Mm. It's like thick mm-hmm. vanilla. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's thick. Yeah. And yep, and caramel. Mm-hmm. Well, bootstrap molasses. It. Uh, Helps relieve uh, constipation. Wow. <laughs> so now it's time for a bathroom break. Relieves constipation, you guys, he said. Do you guys nice. know that rum is the first spirit that was drank for pleasure and not used for medical purposes? According to who? 
I, rum. I, I talk com. to a guy. Does, does, <laughs> that, does that play into uh, Navy <laughs> strength? When they talk about Navy, tr- Navy yeah. strength at all? I believe it, though. So uh, it. Navy, Navy strength is a... There was reasons for having naval strength beyond um, flavor. I'll look that up at hmm. the end. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, so, I, I'm wondering um, when you say naval strength. I'm not. I'm actually not familiar with that term. But with rum, what I've been hearing and reading about is ester count. Is that anything that's within whiskey or bourbon at all? Ester I've never count? heard of that referred to. Okay. Mm-hmm. Esters? I, Esters, yeah, the like amount of esters. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that's, it's one of the things that, you know, people are like, some groups are like, hey, the higher the esters count, like, the better. And it's like, but then there's other people that argue no, mm-hmm. you know. But, yeah, I, I'm just wondering if that's sort of like. Oh, yeah, I, I too have. I mean, I, I have Again, heard that Again, still term. learning here, but yeah, I've heard I'm that just term. like, what the not, heck. Not in whiskey. Not, yeah, not okay. in discussion about. It might be like when you are a distiller. We need a at, chemist. Yeah, we need a chemist <laughs> to come in. I mean, how far removed really are like you know molecular biologists, chemists, and master distillers? <laughs> you know, no, exactly. yeah, for sure. Right? I mean, yeah, your divisions PhDs, are a little different, man. but you probably had to take if you are like a collegiate educated person, you probably took the same classes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to right be now. all three of those. So should we? I like to give ratings for stuff. I know this is the first one. Okay, and it's kind of hard to compare it to anything else. Sure, but I just like Six. doing out of tens. Out of so yeah, maybe. tens being tens being perfect, like it okay. could not get any better. Hmm. That'd be a ten, and one and being that, so that's almost impossible to be. But yeah, yeah. So like five is still like this was good. Okay, uh, may I ask um, how much for the bottle? Is this seven fifty mil? It's seven fifty. Okay. Um, what price range are we talking here? Fifty sixty. Yeah. Really? I think. Wow. Okay. Well, I suppose it's a sixty proof. Mm-hmm. So. Right. Yeah. Sh- you know, knowing the, the price, score yeah, and then it's like got a, the price. Yeah. Oh, that's a, that's a different calc- well, yeah. but still, that's a different even calculation. But Dylan it's enjoyment it, to so value he knew already. Yeah, I, I think value, like, yeah, because that to me is also part of the rating. Yeah. Like, in a sense, well, like, I okay, go, yeah. No, I, I'm with you. Yeah. I'm totally like, yeah. I, I will only buy things that are of value to me, like for the money. Mm-hmm. But I can usually differentiate between how good it is, and then you add the price factor, right. and then it's like, all right, for sure. Then you take the combined value. Totally so, like, fair. so this is like, yeah, this is like a six out of ten, but it's sixty bucks, and there's lots of sixty dollar other drinks that I are bit, they're seven, eight, nines out of ten. Yeah, so I'm gonna buy those instead for sure. Um, I would, that, that'd yeah. be my opinion. I'd six, agree seven. with that. I w- yeah, I would say a six as well. Like, and I I actually feel like it could go. You play with it, it could go to the seven. Mm-hmm. Uh, cause I agree. Like, again, that foundation is there yep. to play with, uh, you know, it's, it's yep. clean enough. It's really, cause yeah, this is really good to start Yeah, and then it stops. It, it, it's not great. It's just the best good. It's the best good can be. <laughs> yeah. I, and I think a lot of people find this very hot. So, um, yep. I'd, I'd give it a six and a half. I, I said six. Okay. I'll, I'll stick with that. Okay. It's hard for me to to do it on the the first drink, but I'm gonna go like five, five, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's it, it, it's very strong, um, and of course I you know based my rum on our own Sailor Jerry, <laughs> so uh, you know Sailor Jerry being a ten in my in my book. So this is fifteen. <laughs> no, this this would be this would be lower. This would be like oh, a seven. Wow. wow. Okay. We are tearing down the walls tonight. Yeah. Holy Texas holy. is angry. Man. Um so I, I did oh well. I did a very limited research, very in depth. So on foremost strength. expert now on, on naval strength rum. Yep. Um according to this one website, so it, it <laughs> Uh, naval strength is used to be it was a measurement created by the English it seems um, it goes back to proofing United States proofing is 50% you double that right 100 yep. proof yep. Um, their proofing at 100 proof was actually 54 to 57 mm-hmm. so it was a different proofing um, but so naval strength I believe is actually around that 100% measurement that they developed, so it's a different from United States proof measurement. Um, so between 54, 57, 
this just says it was uh, it's part of the daily ration for sailors at the time, and it gave them that extra kick to load cannons yep. yeah. if they're being sh- fired at. I everything so <laughs> everything is fine. Yep. Everything feels <laughs> drunk. It's, it's strong enough. It's strong enough to use as accelerant to light yeah, the cannons. Exactly. You know, if they, if need be, like yep. I'll rot a gunpowder. I'll just Dude, put the yeah. rum in. Fire it. the molten rum. <laughs> right. Save just ignore those ones. explosions in the background. That's, yeah. Those yeah. are fireworks. Yeah. Captain, I have a splinter <laughs> through my chest. Yeah. Drink more rum. You'll feel better we'll about it. We'll double your rations. Mm-hmm. Thank you, wow, Captain. Wow, that's crazy. Cool. Naval strength. That's interesting. I think it's, it's. I think more commonly heard with gin. Mm-hmm. Naval really? strength gin. Oh yeah. man, I gotta start but reading more. I, no, you don't. You just gotta listen to podcasts. <laughs> yeah, I, I'd it's just be on interesting. The, boat than the gin boat. <laughs> mm-hmm. I have a podcast idea. Yeah, okay. about rum. I know this is kind of straying again, but I think we should play Sea of Thieves <laughs> while we do Drink a rum. naval strength. Uh-huh. Podcast. Oh. I thought that would be a good podcast. It would be a perfect so, YouTube channel. And it's yeah. just and it's <laughs> just YouTube like channel. real life. You know, you could be like a sailor because you got you get shot at from the other ships, <laughs> mm-hmm. but you also have mm-hmm. to find time to take a drink and review the drink yep. while you're sailing. And if you die around. in the game, you die in real life. Yeah, there is a new pirate game coming up, by the way, <laughs> like this fall game. that looks really good. amazing. Ubisoft, what so, Ubisoft, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll we'll have to do that. Yeah. Oh, that anyway, super fun. <laughs> Is it time for the next Captain. one? Yep, I think we're Look. Yeah, let's get to the uh let's get to the next one. Okay. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> you go ahead. It's I think it's time for the next one. Yeah, so I'm excited for this first one here because you mentioned four square earlier. And we have a four square. Oh, we have a four square. Ooh. We have we actually have um this this company was bought by Foursquare. Okay. Yeah, so this is Barbados. Mm-hmm. So we're going to get on a plane. Just like the pirates, Zach. Just yeah. like the pirates. Um, but this is what's considered a Bahan rum, meaning you cannot add anything else to it other than the caramel color. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, what's the color norm- normally like? Just clear? Clear. Or, yeah. Yep. Yep. And so uh, this is 40%. Cool. But this is Dorley's aged eight years. Oh, wow. Excellent. Okay. It's a little bit older than the Balcona. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just by um, six years. But I'll I'll pass you the bottle. Um and you can take a look at it. Cool. Does it have a like a pirate captain on it? Nope, it's got a parrot. Oh, which so, is, no, that's yeah. still, yeah. still, still a That is a pirate team. captain. Yep. Yeah. Pirate, which is still a pirate oh, captain. Okay. While we're, while we're passing this around, I'm driving around. Fine. Uh, old. I drove over the river from St. Paul to Minneapolis. Uh, I forgot which bridge it was, and there was this guy. He had no shirt. He was in, like, his late 40s, and on his shoulder was a parrot <gasps> outside. A real-life pirate. A real-life one. And and I just see him. He's taking selfies with himself, and I just see, like, he's a what? He's just got a parrot on his shoulder. I've never seen a parrot in the open in real life, not in a zoo, not in a cage. Just It's like taking a walk with a pet, you know? And the parrot chooses to to shelf on his shoulder. It's well, it's crazy. He's, he's he's missing his wings. Yeah, he's, so yeah he's he can't forced, fly. Yeah, he's forced to. Uh, <laughs> he's been de- he's been clipped. <laughs> my he's loyal been, parrot <laughs> friend. My loyal parrot friend. But if you move I, off, he was so more. colorful. I'm like, this is the craziest thing ever. I've never seen. Because I had a parrot, and the poor thing was just in a cage forever. Why did you put you it had in a cage? Parrot? Yeah, my gra- when my grandpa died, uh, he had a parrot and two parrotlets, and we inherited them. What's parrot? Uh, it's kind of like a parakeet, a but it parrot. isn't. It's mm. a, it's like a cousin of the parakeet, and they're, I mean they're all super cute. We called the 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 big parrot. His name was King Solomon because he had a little tuft of blonde hair on the front or blonde feathers that looked like a crown, and we just <laughs> called him King Solomon. And he could talk. He would just say, I think the words he used were like wait, and then and then also it would just be like <laughs> so creepy. Yeah, nope, right? Nope. Yeah, <laughs> wait. And then the I mean. I guess I shouldn't say words. It was just very distinctive sounds. Like, More like, like threats. Yeah. You know, Don't go to like, sleep. One, one was Don't like, fall asleep. He'd make a door They're opening. They're coming for you. He'd make like a door opening. Ah. Caw, you know, like. <laughs> and then and then one would just be like a scream, you know. Oh. Yeah. So it's like the last moments of someone. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. Wait. He recorded your grandpa. <laughs> Uh, wait! Oh, <laughs> no. oh no! 
no. <laughs> oh my goodness. It's weird because that's kind of what happened. I heard. Yeah. Like the, no. Uh, I yeah. Yeah. I think my dad was less, was the person who was in the room when he died. So <laughs> I think I just learned something I shouldn't have. <laughs> So, excellent. One. This is a cork pop of the Dorley's Barbados rum. Ooh, nice. Yeah. Nice. I like it. So yeah, this is uh this is real rum, when it's a Bahan rum. Okay. Like this is the you're not getting your spices, all the sugars, additives, etc. So we will get there if we want to. <laughs> but again, uh, because of the core of this podcast, I figured that these were the ones to just try to, you know, taste Bridge out. The, yeah, mm-hmm. I'm excited. Um, but yeah, this is Dorley's Eight Year. What does it smell like, Hunter? It smells, uh, it smells nice and sweet. Yeah, I really like that aroma. As opposed to not nice and sweet. Well, it's the, bad last, and sweet. the last one, I mean, the last Compared one, I last, smelled yeah. it. It just, it, and like I said, I I have my opinions. I'll leave them there. <laughs> well, let's hear them. Come come <laughs> find me. But yeah, tell us this, again. This, this one this one smells really good. Cool. Like oh yeah. The, oh man. Oh yeah. Super vanilla. Mm-hmm. Like super. It doesn't burn my nostrils this time. What is twenty percent less? Yeah, twenty percent less. Oh, twenty percent. Okay. This is forty percent alcohol. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. Vanilla. Caramel, apple, Ooh, yeah. yeah. Oaky. Oh, yeah. Started in 1908. That is good. This company? This company, yeah. But then I think 2015, 2016, purchased by Foursquare. Man, what? Ooh, I'm, I'm smelling silky. something particular. It's going to kill me because I can't, can't describe it well. I'm with oh, you on it's that. it smells like okay. Spe- oddly specific, when you're mixing like watercolor paint, that's what I get. Like yeah, it, I know, I know. Kind of watered green. down. It, I get that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It, it smells like paint, but not like acrylic paint or oil based paint. Just like those Old water co- like watercolors that you yep. mixed in school. Hmm. Tastes better than that though. It's better than watercolor. I don't know. That was pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Did you, did you eat paint chips? No, I drank them. <laughs> yep. Get a good blue going. Eat some Play Doh, drink some paint chips. Perfect mix in elementary school. It's very light. Mm hmm. Very yeah. light. Oh, yeah. This is hydrating. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Keep you going on the ship. <laughs> yeah, super. Yeah, like a, the, this, the peel of a banana. You know, a little more fibrous. Would you say it's kind of potassium y? Tastes like potassium. K. Peel banana. Get it? K. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Elements. I'll work that in there. So I hit I hit the lime, and that smell actually becomes sweeter. Oh. If you want to give it a I, shot. I get a lime in there. The lime. So far away. Mm-hmm. Just gotta do some some yeah. good leans. And get that on your on your palate, and yep. then hit so, it again. So when you you lime in the mouth. Yep. I wish I was better at recognizing certain wood types. This is mm. uh, the white oak. Mm-hmm. Right, but like the, uh, the smell, mm. my my brain has popped up sandalwood because that's an often <laughs> referred mm-hmm. to smell, but not necessarily that it smells like sandalwood, but it, it does smell like a certain wood. It smells like Old Spice deodorant. Just kidding. I'm gonna be frank. The the lime doesn't make it better for me. I kind of like okay. it. I liked it a little sure. more simple. Okay. The acidity. Mm. It does. It does kind of cut through the lime, and that's a fun sensation. Yep. I love that. Yep. But it doesn't actually make it taste better, in my okay. in my opinion. Sure. This would super easy. Just have a glass of this, and no threat. It's just super nice. Now get back. Mm-hmm. Drink at your own speed. Yep. Or is that Belconis? You can't drink that thing really no. fast. Yeah. Right. Yep. Um, not that you want to drink this fast either, but no. it's it's a lot more easy. It's a um, that's what it is. It's a it's a background spirit. Like 
background whiskey or what you it's not the primary activity mm-hmm. you can watch oh. a movie play some games read mm-hmm. something mm-hmm. and you could have this whereas that Balconis might yeah. take more of the attention. Yeah, I, it, it's probably because we because we started with that Balconis, but this just has a gentle mouth feel. You know, mm-hmm. it's silky, more. What is forty like, percent? Yeah, I, yeah. But I just mean like it does. Yeah, it doesn't attack your tongue. The vapors don't vaporize in your mouth. You're not eating, you know, gas. You're just you're just drinking liquid, and it's really really calming. And it, I get a lot in my like the. You know, like when you have a sensation on the tongue and then it like activates the nerves of your face, lots in like the the sides of my mouth, the, mm. the upper cheeks are like. Mm, you have the draconis really nice. muscle. <laughs> yeah, the, the draconis muscle. Falapian dopus. Falapian dopus. <laughs> Hunter, is that are those correct? dinosaurs? Uh, they'd be your maxillary. <laughs> maxillary. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much. Yeah. I was going a little more. Hunter's a model. What is this level. one, Hunter? <laughs> what is this one? That's your temple. Um, <laughs> I would agree, though. Hunter, like, what is this one? But that's also, again, personal preference. Right. When I look at, or when I seek out, I should say, a uh, something that I am going to sip, I like that 40 range, mm-hmm. you know, because it's it's just enough, you know? Yeah, yeah that, that's a good word, or that's a good phrase, it's just enough, because mm-hmm. it's, that's, that's absolute truth. It's just enough. You're right there. It doesn't have to be stronger. You don't want it weaker. Right. That's right. Right. You just made it. And, that's, and awesome. that's why I like having it in that range with, with a rum because of those complexity of flavors that you can have, especially when mixing, et cetera. Mm-hmm. You know, but, but yeah. Yeah, that was thank, fun. yeah. Thank you for sharing. This stuff yeah. is really good. Awesome. So we're ready for the next one, uh, huh? Rating? Yeah, we're ready. Uh, oh, yes, yeah. Rating. Rating. Thank yeah. you, Hunter. Yeah. Look at me. Thank you so much. All right, so I don't want to know the price. And I'm just, I'm going to say, I, I didn't like it as much as the Balcones Texas rum. So I'm going to give it a five. It's a five out of ten. Mm-hmm. I liked it before I I introduced the the acidic fruits and whatnot. But because I think I kind of lost some of the, like, more subtle flavors. Like, I had a, just a bunch of lime in my mouth. Right. And that I sounds like user sip. error to me. Wow. You ate the lime wrong. I well, yeah, I didn't eat the rind. Yeah, it's the inside. You ate the you brine to eat. first. Am I to <laughs> oh, so I should have ate the rind. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I'll, I'm just gonna copy Zach because I'm a follower. I'll do five out of five. <laughs> okay. Sure. I am. Uh, I am not a mm-hmm. follower. I mm-hmm. am going the opposite direction. I would give it seven. Ooh, seven. I praise. Yeah. Uh, it's very nice. It's a good sipping one, much better than the the stronger one. I, I appreciate the the more subtle flavors of it, and it is uh, much better than the other one. I would, I'd give it an eight. An eight. Whoa! Well, I mean, I always have to remind people Still like just under, under, understand what you're saying with eight. You're saying that there's only perfect. only two points more, and that'd be perfect. Perfect. Could not get any better if yeah, it was twenty percent better. Sailor Jerry's a fifteen. Him, so, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. I think it is hard with inexperienced rum drinkers because mm-hmm. you know? it's like you don't, you don't. <laughs> ouch! First of all, ouch! And second of all, I, I believe Go so. On. Yes. I, Zach, I was was Zach, you don't Zach did that. you turn twenty one last week? <laughs> no. Oh, okay. No. I agree with you, the Hunter. Mm-hmm. You're good. Say what you need to say, oh, man. I was, I was just going to say, you don't you don't have that experience to put together a, a relative scale. It's a different yeah. taste, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Why are you looking at Zach when you said that? Yeah. God, I'm, I'm youthful. <laughs> youthful in appearance. Youthful. Just let the he man moisturizes. Brown I moisturize, the guys. The podcast. Exfoliates. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, it's very, very easy drinking. It's very... I love that the flavors are so up front and the alcohol kind of takes a backseat, which is what I think of when I think of rum. So I think of the sweetness is cranked up and the alcohol is more subtle. Um, this is still not as complicated as I would enjoy. So for that, I think I'm going to give it a, a five also. Yeah. Also, I, I guess I should add too that historically, me, Zach, don't like rums. Uh, this trip. I, I haven't had a rum on the podcast where I'm like, this is amazing. Mm. I'm really hoping tonight I, sure. I can be proved wrong. 
Sorry, I'll, should I let? Shane no, go this? ahead, man. I was just gonna say. So when I said inexperience, <laughs> it was actually it was, it was oh, not man. throwing it was shade not direction. Just you were making, making fun of everybody. Point. Now I'm gonna no, stop you. For, <laughs> yeah. for us. No, don't. I'm not for offended. Yeah, don't it sounds like it. you're just trying to so, butter him up now. I'm not gonna walk back my, my <laughs> statement. <laughs> no. It just wasn't directed at Zach. It was directed more at my myself and people that haven't wow. had. It's directed had at the rum. parrot on the bottle. Yep. He's <laughs> yeah. the parrot. He's don't know what he wants. He's reflecting himself the, the upon us via <laughs> our unfamiliarity. It's just weird how he said it. Drink. He's like, you right. guys don't <laughs> have any experience. Watch your back. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll say... Wait. Um, Wait. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, again, with the Balconis... Um, Man, that has got such a solid foundation where this one really just lightened up all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. And even mm -hmm. though, like, I think it's a nice, clean rum, I, I would not guess that's an eight-year. No. Just by the yeah. lightness and mm -hmm. the textures. I think I, we drank these out of order. Cause well, hey, we got, we got we're six, learning, but, right? But now yeah, we, we got more to go. For we sure. Yeah. Um, but, but again, like, I, that is the uh, – that's the thing that I think – we got to get out of our heads too. Is is mm -hmm. these years and and then going mm -hmm. well? It should mm -hmm. be better. And it's like it's, mm -hmm. no, it's different. But I would like to play with this rum because of its lightness. And I think that you know, again, not mixing something heavy with it that's overpowering, but again, unlocking something there. Mm -hmm. You know, it's yeah. interesting. You mentioned the the paint thing. It's like does it need to breathe a little more mm -hmm. and, and and thing. You know, so again, a uh, a nice foundation, but definitely lighter from a. Uh, just complexity yeah as you mentioned dylan yep. the, the other thing i would i <laughs> that you reminded me of shamian is um the two things that could be massively impacting these other than blending and whatever um we don't know what proof this off the still these came from because Belcona's traditionally is from a whiskey distillery it could be treated more as a whiskey and less of a traditional rum um where this barbados it might be coming off the still a lot higher, which would mean a lot of that those heavier, meatier flavors um, and that traditionally make it more complex might be left behind in the Barbados. Also, what proof they're going in at the barrel. Um, those are all different things. I have absolutely no idea what, what they would be trading a, a rum at. Um, and those, so those two things for me would be something that would be very interesting to figure out what – and how those are uh, affecting the flavors. For sure. No, that's a good point, actually, because um, when I was researching this one, uh, my notes here is that it's a blend of column and pot still rums, mm -hmm. right? So, yeah. Um, I for, I know Balconis does a lot pot still. i 85% sure they have a column, but I think they only use it for gin i forget yeah. mm. the, the one remember. we just tried was all pot still okay yeah sure. it's, on, it's on the label sure Makes Cop sense. copper pot specifically mm. yeah finally um, finally hammered <laughs> yeah it's got the they, perfect they dimples a, yeah, the hammer is yeah. hung up yep. across the doorway it's yep. like, this is the hammer it's the finest ball peen hammer you've ever seen and then they had to have a professional come in that makes the best dimples you know yeah. ping, jamie ping, jamie ping. the hammer man <laughs> came in there. so yeah let's let's move on to the next one please all right this one is called appleton estate mm. okay 12 year from jamaica I've actually had this one before. You have. Excellent. Mm -hmm. did you, okay. Did you said you say Jamaica? Mm-hmm. Jamaica. Jamaica, me crazy, man. <laughs> no. no. We'll edit that out in post. <laughs> <laughs> that needs to go. Our, like, four Jamaican listeners mm -hmm. just left. Yep. <laughs> Do you have that many? I got to know. That's a good question. Or I'm assuming there's got to be I'm going to have to take... It's the rum episode. Yeah. Jamaicans I'm gonna have to, are like, ah, yes, the, finally. Double check the demographic on that to see if we're actually. <laughs> double check. What's crazy uh, about um, as as that gets opened up, so these were really hard to find. Like, yeah. I, I did some research, and, you know, we're in Minnesota. Do, do we want to cork <laughs> pop that, or is it too late? No, I, She's yeah, got to break the seal. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I went to uh, so I was looking on Total Wine, right, and and um, just again like reading reviews, making notes, 
And Total Wine didn't have any of these. And, uh, well, I shouldn't say that. They had a few of these. Mm-hmm. But then uh, I got on Reddit, and there's a really nice uh, Reddit uh, rum community there. And um, somebody mentioned Haskell's here in Minnetonka. Okay. And the buyer that's there, I mean, it's a wall of rum. There's there's a ton in there. In fact, they were even on the Haskell's website. Mm-hmm. And I got in there. I was like, oh, my God, this is exciting. Yeah. So I actually I had a list that I was going to buy. Yep. And then I got there, threw the list out. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, my God, they have this, this yeah, and, and this. That, and, <laughs> yeah. Yep. So um, I got really excited uh, for these because um, I've read some really good reviews about these. Um, but, yeah, I'm definitely excited for this one for sure. I'm excited about this one. We're going to do a cork pot on the Appleton 12-year. Mm, poppy. It was very – You can smell you the know, Jamaican That cork did not yeah, want to come out. Uh-uh. <laughs> yes, it was in there. I'm excited about this one. This one's not 40%. It's 43 mm-hmm. Um And I, know, I have heard that the Jamaican ones are a little bit more funky as far as flavor. Ooh, I like funk. So I'm looking forward to this one and maybe being a little bit more complex. But. So, fun fact, Appleton Estates is the only rum we bought for our first, like, two years of marriage. Congratulations. Mm-hmm. Wow. And then what did you explore after that? We, I, I don't even know what. <laughs> I just Bacardi. Sealer Bacardi. Jerry, <laughs> uh, Bacardi, <laughs> Bacardi party yeah. all I think, night. I think it's every about night. time that we um, try something different. Let's, let's. But no, I just, I, uh, Bacardi. I'm not going to give my thoughts because I don't want to influence anyone. Okay. But, you know. But yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for Bacardi your restraint. Kind of cool. Didn't mm-hmm. have it back. This uh this line Appleton Estates reminds me a lot of like uh the Glen Livet, the Glen Morang, like where they go, we're gonna give you a twenty dollar bottle, but we're gonna give you a hundred and fifty dollar bottle. Mm-hmm. And and they're all just gonna have good things about them. Mm-hmm. And this is the, the middle range one. Um because there there are definitely ones that you can get that are just like mixer ones you know they're sweeter etc mm-hmm. but this one is uh yeah. they got the ones where neat. they they make some bulk money out of you know they yeah. make them in bulk they yeah. sell them for cheap but their profit margin's high right and then they then they have their fun ones where they're, yeah. they're distillers and they're artisans and they're expressionists can be yeah. like all right this is something <laughs> worth drinking right and and that is uh something you're not going to get with the Doralees. uh yeah. so I, yeah good point I did Mm. look. um, We do not have a Jamaican demographic currently. So if anyone was interested in that, we do have South African, Mm -hmm. um, Israel, Mm -hmm. Germany, and a couple other ones. Cool. No, no, no Jamaican. We're a global podcast, people. A global community of Minnesotans. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And we drink everything made in barrels. (laughs) That nose, man. Flowers much? Funk. Like, <laughs> so I, I, I'm smelling very floral. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Totally. I have a note that I picked out. I want to save it for the last, not to just in case if I influence anything. That is. But I do like this a lot. Yeah. More. It's, this is my favorite nose out of the three. For sure. For sure. It is very colorful. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it's very like a leafy, like a. Uh, like a cabbage, a fresh cabbage or a spinach kind of vibe. Okay, so the note I was getting on the nose that, that stood out, that that's all there, all those other notes. Sulfur. Sulfur. I it's, just not, it's not rank enough for me to be like, oh, yeah. It's I, I'm a not little getting... bit like a match head. Uh-huh. I'm trying. I'm, I'm trying. But like those those matches that you get at like pottery barn <laughs> the good ones the bend the, the bendy barn. ones <laughs> oh, yeah. the good ones yeah it's like a note of banana leaves yeah, yeah banana, banana leaves banana leaves yeah. i have not experienced banana leaf i was thinking sauerkraut 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 yeah cuz i was thinking well i was i think th- i thought this silently but kimchi which is <laughs> okay yeah, yeah sure what's along the lines of sauerkraut if the german listener could Right in and tell us about sauerkraut. Yeah, right. you German listener, please. I think we, we we have sauerkraut. I mean, we're all they know sauerkraut. Yeah, they got real oh, sauerkraut. Yeah. I've I bend, tasted this. I've been the Black Forest Inn in Uptown. <laughs> that makes me about because I already have fifty percent German heritage, so that means I'm basically German. Now, tell me the difference between the nose versus the taste. 
I haven't tasted. My it goodness, yet. very different, very different. I've noticed that it it swallows. It's so smooth going down, and then it comes back up the nose, and it just yeah, it's sharp. It's interesting. There's there's a um, it's doing something to the tip of the tongue, right at the beginning, but that sticks through the whole way. It's like a a tart tartness to it but it right at the beginning as it first hits the tongue and it stays through into the finish and still lingers through mm-hmm. it's very interesting that pulled the intent my attention mm-hmm. um first and foremost yeah, i compare this sweetness profile to not that of like sugar or molasses but like bread this kind of has a bready note or, or flavor note to me cinnamon bread cinnamon bread this is like in my opinion like the LaCroix flavored rum where you had the rum <laughs> and this this is no, the let, rum let that you know it's it's sitting in the other room and you're like filter feeding through the air trying to taste the rum like it doesn't taste like anything but there's like an essence of something I mean I guess like it tastes kind of dusty I it's, guess I, earthy I can get I guess I can kind of get with that I mean I think it tastes a lot like rum. It tastes better I don't. the more you drink. <laughs> just just take it, just slam it. Uh, your, then tell us what you think. <laughs> well I'm taking, you know <laughs> no, I'm just joking. little sips yeah. and getting a progressive like flavor bill. I will say, I'm not gonna say anything about rating, but I will say I am deeply impressed by this bottle so far. Mm-hmm. This one so far for me is um the most surprising. Because I, I kind of knew what to expect from a Balconis, 60%. Yeah. This is surprising me mm-hmm. um, with no expectation no. going in. I just like how many flavors you get. Because, you know, the mm-hmm. first drink, you taste something. The second sip, some different. Third sip, some different. You know, not every rum or well, any not every drink has different flavors every time you sip it. This one does. It tastes mm-hmm. different the more you drink of it, mm-hmm. which is super cool. It's super complex, mm-hmm. and that's probably because the twelve. The, I think in this case, it's because of the age, twelve years. Right. I think the yeah. twelve years is making that a reality. This is remind me of uh, the allspice that we have up there, mm-hmm. uh, the dram. Oh, for sure. Um, man, that's it, it's uh, it's crazy. It's forty three. I taste. 15? <laughs> like, there's no <laughs> alcohol to it's this. It's super smooth. Mm-hmm. And, like, it is. Very yeah. I don't gentle. think it's quite as smooth as the last one, the Dora Lee's. Okay. Really? But, yeah, no, I think this is it's, harsher. It's, I'm going to... Yeah. yeah. I, don't, yeah. I, don't, I don't know if I... Hunter, say what you're going to say. It's be, it's because of the the nose, I, I feel. Yeah. Because it, it's, it tastes it tastes very smooth, but it combined, it I would agree that it's, it's harsher than the last one. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I was I was gonna side, um, Shaming and Zach you both said, essentially things I agree with, is but I, I'm what I think I contributed to is excluding cheaper spirits with how their alcohol burn occurs is like a nicer uh, bourbon or a scotch with the proof still being low less than fifty, but it's still being off of that forty percent minimum. It's to me, when I experience kind of a nicer um, whiskey or something, it's that additional alcohol to a certain point doesn't contribute towards a, a burningness, but just adds that flavor. It's a multiplying of mm-hmm. the flavor. And this is a prime example, at least in my opinion, mm-hmm. of what uh, it's prime been, occurring. Yep, yeah, it's been sanded, essentially. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. smoothened it out. Mm-hmm. You've lost all the harshness that alcohol creates. This would this is we'll a nice see, one. Yeah. yeah. As I Super smell good. it, I feel like I'm losing like that first nose. I was getting way like super strong floral smells progressively as I smell I'm losing that, but as I taste it, I feel like I'm getting a little bit more every time yeah. on the flavor, but mm-hmm. not. This is an That's apple what I was saying. pie. Every time you drink it, yeah. it tastes it, a little it, different. It is yeah. It's very much a fall rum. Mm-hmm. But yeah. it's closer to the rum yeah. right that we're yeah. kind of mm-hmm. like thinking about talked about earlier yeah. Yeah. and so for this one i don't want and can't think of anything i would mix this with you know i, I can't even imagine yeah. putting this in something no. else 
Because it would be it would, overpowered. It would, well, yeah, it would it would be ruined, or yeah. it would ruin what I'm mixing it with. Because it, it's yeah. what it's what it it's belong. like is um, it it I, it can be mixed, but you don't want to. Mm-hmm. It's like if somebody <laughs> like an experience I had is I bought a bottle of Angel's Envy rum, yep. the rye, with yep. it's rum finished, and I'm like, oh, this is just good on its own, super good. And I let someone try it, and they're like, oh yeah, this is really good. And then I saw them later making a cocktail out of it. And I'm sure it was amazing the cocktail, but the only thing I could think of at po- that point was like that was just eighty dollars, and you just took a quarter of the bottle and <laughs> mm-hmm. used it for a mm-hmm. as a mixer. Yeah, oh Matt, what ah. you, Matt, what do you think of this? I like it. It's <clears throat> lean in your area. You know, it's interesting how it starts out, um, and you kind of become more used to it, and uh, the flavors become better as you go along. I've noticed with it, it's mm-hmm. it is a good sipping one. Um, yeah. Like, yeah, you would probably not want to mix it with anything, so mm-hmm. it'd be tough to have as my favorite rum because it's the best part of that is ice and diet coke. <laughs> right on. We're, we'll, we'll try to get there. Yeah. All right. Quick but break. I, I would like to taste this in like three days. See yeah. what it does when it breathes and stuff. Yeah. It, it, it is. Yeah. The complexity is there, but now the alcohol yeah. is not. It's mm-hmm. interesting. I, are you thinking about going to a commercial break? Was that what you're saying? No, I was thinking oh, sorry. Uh, quick rankings. rankings. Okay. Uh, uh, I, I would like – I'm curious um, on that last one since we already ranked it. Yeah. What was the price on that last one? What would you guess? 40 I'm going to guess 65 45 Some, Didn't somebody say 43 that's the pr- that's the percentage oh, the of percentage all over on this, this one. one. Matt, you got a number for the door for the Dorleys. Dorleys eight before years. this. It's, it's probably uh, fifty five dollars. Fifty five dollars, he says, for the Dorleys. Twenty two bucks. Whoa. Twenty two bucks. Wow. Cool. I, dang that's dang right, cool man. Yeah, getting <laughs> yeah that's, value that's proposition. Yeah. See, but you know what? Yeah. Now my score has gone up. <laughs> yeah, sure. You know, if it was a hey, man. I, I still, $50, I don't $60 think bottle. Yeah, I can, well, yeah, I, I mean, in my mind, I can differentiate things. Like, I can differentiate price and performance, but the value is what, mm-hmm. is, that's, that's, what that's what motivates my wallet Yeah, to lose money. It's surprising <laughs> tasting that and, and, uh, cause I, I, I was, uh, I was hesitant on it. I was like, man, 22 bucks. Mm hmm. Not a lot of good liquors out there for twenty two dollars. <laughs> uh-huh. I don't care what anybody says, but uh, I, I, I've I've <laughs> I've proved that to be slightly false. No, no, there <laughs> definitely are ones for sure, but it's few and far between. Mm-hmm. Let's just put it that way. Yeah, especially for eight year. Mm-hmm. I mean, give me a break. Eight year. I that's have, that's a pretty good value. I have found it harder to find twenty sub twenty dollar bottles of Elijah Craig lately. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. But I still awesome. try. Anyway, so so with that now, yeah, uh, you went again to ratings. Sure, yeah, and yeah. I was gonna for this one. Uh, just stick with integers. Just gonna put out a seven. I think it's really mm-hmm. good. The smell, I think, is fantastic. Like yeah. Eight, eight and a half out of ten. And I, you know, the flavor is way more complex and deep than the last one. So it's like a six and a half mm-hmm. for me. But integers combining the two. I'm going to stick with 7 out of 10 for the, uh, what's it called, Appleton Estate. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I I think I would, I was going to say 6 or 7. I think I'm just going to split in the middle, do 6.5. I, I like, it's kind of like what Dylan was saying earlier. You have certain things that you feel acquire, require more attention. This one, I would not feel bad doing something, drinking it, oh, especially for like, 20 something bucks like no, well, that, that was the yeah. last one. Oh, that was we oh, haven't given yeah. price we're gonna probably give <laughs> oh, price oh okay after we rate these all right clearly i'm sure. not paying attention that's all right man so you relax i'll it's stick good. with 6.5 that's okay sure yeah i've never been disappointed with appleton estates and i continue not to be disappointed nice. with appleton estates i will go 7.5 and knock the last one down to 6.5 just to be fair to this one, mm, mm. changing scores. Now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got it. Your scale just. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> nice. No, I'd I'd say it's solid, solid seven. I enjoy it. Um, it's interesting when you first start out on it, but it, it it is. It's different notes as you go through it, and it it finishes very very nice. So right at least a seven. 
was I was going to agree with what Zach was saying too. And, you know, um, it this to me is on the the level of enjoyment with like a space side. Where it's like it's not my favorite, mm-hmm. but it's I can appreciate it. And yep. this is really good. I I do enjoy this. Yeah. So for that, I was going to give it a seven. Yeah, I I agree. The uh, I'm going to go with the seven as well because of just man that nose is so colorful i don't even know what to do with that bottle actually mm-hmm. <laughs> like <laughs> i'm gonna have to uh read more up on it but again it 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 leans towards what we're used to and it seems really fun even just neat like yeah let that thing breathe and just play with it as well um but definitely more body complexity it, it's almost like a balance between the first two in a sense you know, but yeah, super fun. Apple States. So I have to ask: Was this one of their more expensive bottles? Well, uh, do the numbers, man. What do you got? <laughs> I, I I even I don't look at rum prices, I guess, because I I guess real high on that last one, and that doesn't Just seem think, like it's a. Think but, Scotch whiskeys. Really the same. Really. Yeah. Wow. So just kind of I mean, think of the that's Glen crazy. line. That's right? crazy. Let's say fifty. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm gonna say sixty-five again. For this one, forty-five bucks. All right. I was gonna say it like a sixty to seventy dollar bottle somewhere in there. Well, I thought I was pricing this one the first time. I was <laughs> yeah. Like somebody said twenty something. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh well. Fifty-five is Matt's 55. Matt's price. I, I love it because not only are you just like exposing the world to good stuff, but you're also bringing value. Mm-hmm. Thirty-four dollars. Wow, <laughs> fun. Okay. Fun, yeah, right? Oh, cool. For cool. thirty-four bucks, you're getting. Oh, yeah. Nick was the closest. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Crazy oh. flavors. And, okay. Yeah. I, I think we need to, to educate you on Scotch prices. <laughs> 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 yeah, I uh, I'm gonna uh, tell you though. I'll tell you what though. Again, when I was researching these, mm-hmm. I was shocked. Yeah. As I mean, to how inexpensive they yeah. were. Yeah. Well, because yeah, you have a similarly age product right. in a similar barrel right. being exported to a, over the ocean to another country that is the same levels of time and, and distance as Scotland or Ireland. But it's all about supply and demand. But it's supply and demand. It is. It's so crazy. And it's like and sugar, that's... And, and, yeah. now that, and now we don't have a... I think a lot of places don't have sugar taxes anymore. <laughs> yes. So Those that, might have ended is, a couple hundred years ago. Yep. So I think sugar is really cheap to make <laughs> stuff with. Yeah, and and now barley is not. Yeah, you would say this one was Written harder to the, find, right, Jamie? Uh, so the Appleton twelve, this one, um, no, the the Dorley's eight, kind of. Okay. These other ones, forget about it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do we think about making this a two part episode? Oh, that's fine. It's your yep. podcast, it's man. <laughs> no, I no. Nick disagrees. Okay. Yeah, I mean, if I can well, get yeah, more just, more pay for more episodes, I'm more yeah. Paying. Yeah. What if I told you the free? <laughs> We're making zero. Nick owns the on keep yeah. on trucking hat. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Always try to get some sponsors. Is all. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking about sponsors, maybe a message from a future one. Uh. uh Origin PC, uh, <laughs> handing out computers as long as you keep talking about them for years to years to come. They'll give you a pre-built. Uh, you have to sell your soul to them, though, and give them ad space for like two years. Oh. So Origin PC, everybody. If this does become monetized, you might want to cut that one out. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, nah, we don't care about Origin. I'm going to like register that.com real quick. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Quickly, GoDaddy. This is a, not only are we taking that domain... We're also sponsored by GoDaddy. <laughs> Just kidding. All right. Do you remember GoDaddy Girls? <laughs> yeah. I remember the commercials. commercials. That would never fly now. No. <laughs> no. No. We need GoDaddy Boys. Go. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> and on that note, <laughs> it is time to end the first part of this <laughs> run edition <laughs> of the extra... Of the Whiskey Woo! House Pub House. Oh, Rum House Pub House. Rum House Pub House. Thank, Thank you. you for joining us. We'll see you next week. Goodbye. Peace. <laughs>